So one thing that I get asked about nearly every single video that I make, especially I've been offshore fishing a bunch, is people asking how I set, like what settings do I use on my graph. In my opinion, these are the best settings for the Humminbird Helix units. I'm not sponsored by them. I don't, you know, whatever. I just really enjoy the units. I'm really, really familiar with them. Um, I know, you know, I've obviously used other graphs. Lawrence is, is really good. I just know this unit really well. I know the menu really well. I know how to get to everything quickly. I know what fish look like. And for the most part, if they're catchable, I can tell. And it's just something that I've, you know, I've, I've become used to it. But since everyone asks, I will show. So this is my standard screen. This is the screen that I use 95% of the time. If I'm running somewhere, I'm gonna use this first menu button right here. If I'm graphing or idling anywhere, I'm gonna use the second button, preset with down imaging, side imaging below it, and a little bitty strand or, you know, pane, window pane of the map. And on the bottom, if I know I'm in an area or I'm graphing a big area like grass flies and stuff, uh, where you don't necessarily have to have the map I have one that's full screen. Basically, it's full screen side imaging with a little bit of down imaging. So I'm using this to look at grass lines, especially eelgrass where you're looking for specific little tiny clumps of it. I'm gonna use this screen. Um, I like, this is color palette number three on down imaging. And I also use color palette number five, which is the lime green one. Those are my two favorites just because they stand out. You can see how bright that dot is right there. And then if you go to some other colors, you can see that brown, you can barely see it. Um, even the blue, it pops out a little bit. Number two pops out pretty good. But for me, I like number three and number five best. And I kind of alternate those. There's no real rhyme or reason why I use one versus the other. Um, I am at an idle, right? I mean, I'm at, I'm, you know, my motor's in neutral right now, so it's not going to read really clear. But I am going to go over this area and show you what it looks like when I am on the motor at that optimal idle speed and show you how it reads but just a very quick preview of what i you know my my actual chart settings go over to first thing hummingbird chart if you go to that um, you can change your colors contour lines depth highlight depth highlight range basically what that does is depth colors here i'll actually pull up the map so depth colors is how i've got this dark blue where it's deep and light blue where it's a little shallow and then anywhere that i want it to be green and highlight that specific depth zone i will go to hummingbird chart and if you change this depth highlight so it's on 17 right now take it to 13 the 13 foot area is highlighted and then right below it you see plus or minus one foot and you can also alter that so what that means is it's going to highlight everything that's in 13 foot plus or minus one foot. So from 12 to 14 foot, 12, 13, and 14 feet will all be highlighted green. If you you know, want that to be broadened, you know, maybe you're catching them in, say 15 to 20 feet. I'm gonna put it in the middle. I'm gonna put on 17 feet, plus or minus three feet. So that's gonna read everything from 14 feet to 20 foot. Everything is gonna be highlighted in green. And this works really, really good once you get dialed in on specific depth zones uh, that fish are in, especially fishing grass is when this really plays. And oftentimes, I'll even have this set at zero. That way, the only strip that's highlighted is that exact depth. So that's how to use your color shading. I'm gonna put that back to where I had it. I like it at 16 foot plus or minus two. That's kind of my favorite for ledge fishing. Um, that plus or minus one or plus or minus two. Shallow water highlight, that's gonna show a red strip when you get closer to the bank uh, or any high spots that you want marked red. I keep that on four foot. I don't like really running anything that's less than four foot. Um, so just as a general, I keep that on red on four foot water level. Right now, Gunnersville is at regular pool, so it's at zero. But if the lake was up or down, you can adjust that. So say if it was down four foot, five foot, it actually is gonna real time move those green lines or move whatever your colors are. It's real time gonna move those. So now my next thing to show is my down imaging and side imaging settings. So side Im down imaging first, um, 
sensitivity. This is the Helix 12 Gen 3. Sensitivity, I've got pretty uh, turned up pretty good on 14. Down imaging contrast is on 11. Lower range is on auto. That way the bottom depth adjusts for whatever depth you're in. Chart speed, 6. Down imaging color is on 3. And now you go to side imaging. Side imaging contrast on 11, sensitivity on 11. Side imaging range, 65, I never change that, pretty much ever. I love 65, I know that I can throw any bait 65 feet, and that's what I wanna, that's what I wanna know. That way I can cover that 65 very well. I just really like having a 65. Uh, both sides of the boat, chart speed six, side imaging color number one. I like blue on side imaging. I don't run blue on anything else, and I don't change the color of my side imaging. I'm not a fan of any of these other colors, personally, for side imaging. I just like blue. It shows up the best. Um, so that's kind of my, that's my quick settings on what I use. Um, the other thing is the frequency. This These units are chirp units, so I've got chirp turned on clear mode, down imaging frequency presets, increase detail or increase depth. I go to increase detail and turn the fish ID off. Make sure you get the right transducer and you're good to go. So that was a really quick view of my graphs and how I like to set them up. If you have any questions, just ask. Also, feel free to pause that video and screenshot them, especially if you got Hummingbird Helix, specifically the Gen 3 units. The Gen 2s were a little bit different, the, um, especially on the down imaging. You didn't have to have that sensitivity so high on down imaging. You could have, I mean, on the, on the Gen 2 on down imaging, you could have it a little bit lower. But anyhow, quickly wanted to go over this spot and just show you what my what my side imaging and my down imaging look like. It's really hard to record this because of the light situation. Yeah, really hard to show this. I'm getting a terrible glare. So I'm just gonna keep going, hopefully you can see. Um, but I just really enjoy, I really like the detail that this unit shows, especially on side imaging out here. You can see a lot, you can tell what fish are. Over here there's some fish. I'm hoping y'all can see this stuff. Obviously there's a ton going on on down imaging. That's a lot of bait. There's a stump, looks like a fish on top of it. But out here to the left, you can see that there's fish everywhere out there. Looks like an old road coming in right here. A ton of fish over there. Now these are not, this is not a big bass school. This is just a bunch of junk fish. There's a lot of catfish, crappie, shad, big shad everywhere. But just wanted to quickly show what this looks like. I just really like the depth, the, the attention, the detail that it shows, especially on side imaging. Um, really, really is huge for me. Um, all, I mean, you can see there's a little tree or something right there. So there you can see there's kind of a drop off on the right side and a lot of fish, a clump of fish right there on the left side. Uh, it's not even focusing really well, but look at all the fish. There's so many fish right here, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish. And I actually dropped a GoPro down on them and they're not bass, they're everything. A lot of catfish, a lot of white bass, a lot of crappie, um, bluegill everywhere. Just tons and tons of fish right here. Did not see any bass while my camera was down there. I'm not saying there's not any. Look right here, there's a big old root wad, like an old tree root. It's kind of cool. There we go. All right, well, I just did an entire intro to this video and you could not see me at all. My shirt, you can tell it's hot when your shirt starts getting that little crinkle in it right there. Anyhow, I'm back out on Lake Gunnersville. I'm super excited to be here today. Um, the Elite Series has come and gone. They basically caught them how I thought they would catch them. They kind of got screwed on weather on the last day. So weights were a little low for most guys. I was saying 84 pounds was my guess. It took, I think, 79 and 79 10 to win, right at 80 pounds. Um, so anyhow, today I've got a little video that I've been wanting to do. Um, and y'all always see that I'm throwing a big worm. I throw a big worm a ton. It's my, probably my favorite thing to do out here fishing deep. And um, the thing that you don't see is normally the videos, when I make a video, it's about maybe a week or two after I actually fish. So, you know, just regular life stuff going on. I don't get to film and shoot and record every single day and edit. So video turnaround is about a week, maybe sometimes it's two weeks. So last week and the week before that, I was catching them on a worm, but since then it's got a lot hotter. Um, we've had kind of some weird weather. The Elite Series guys wrecked them. 
spectator boats staying after the tournament after weigh-ins wrecked them and there's just naturally a lot of fishing pressure here and it's gotten hotter things are just changing and so after watching the elite series guys and just watching how everything was going down um you know i'm thinking i want to go back out there and fish some of these schools though are just beat to shreds and it's hard to get a bite so i thought of something that i haven't done yet in a long time i haven't thrown it and I didn't see anybody throwing it in the Elite Series event, and that was a swing head um, out deep. Just a half ounce wobble head, whatever you want to call it, a biffle head. Um, on the back of that, I'm going to put a spicy beaver by Reaction Innovations. Um, I haven't thrown this yet. I haven't, well, I, I've thrown the beaver. I have not put the beaver on a swing head. That's that. I'm going to rig that spicy beaver up. That's an electric shad. And the other thing I'm going to throw is a bait that I have not ever thrown by Reaction Innovations. And I'm going to throw it on a Ned head, but that is called the Shiver Shot. And it's a little bitty worm, kind of like a drop shot worm, kind of like an up north drop shot worm. Um, like you think of it fishing for smallies. Hang on. So I've got my Z Man Ned head, 116, 16th or yeah sixth ounce and i'm gonna throw a green pumpkin to start with shiver shot and so this thing i'm gonna rig it up just like a turd worm just like so the only difference is between this and the turd worm as you can see that tail right now i'm not i'm literally holding it still with my hand and that thing's still moving like it that tail doesn't stop moving so in the water it's gonna do the same thing um, so today I'm literally I've got all my big stuff out but I'm gonna throw that net head and that spicy beaver on a swing head I'm gonna throw it a lot I'm, I'm uh, that's kind of my thing I'm just gonna go fish school for those two baits see if I can get bit I'm I would hope that I could um, here, I'm gonna show you how to rig this up too this is the new spicy beaver super freaking good bait but if you can see right there, oh, focus. Okay, if you can see right there, there's a little ledge on the side of this bait. That ledge is, it serves two purposes. When you uh, put your hook in and run it out under that ledge like that, focus. Okay, like that. Then when you run it up, what that's going to do is two things. It's going to make the bait a little bit more weedless because it keeps the bend of the hook kind of tucked back in. But it also keeps the bait on the hook better because it's got that that ledge kind of holding it on. It holds the bait on a it holds the bait on very very well. I'm going to just barely text pose this, so I'm going to leave the hook point on top and just barely barely. I mean just barely push into the skin of the plastic reason is making a long cast reeling that thing back you might not feel the bites always gonna it's gonna hit off something and the line just gonna go slack so sometimes you're gonna have an awkward hook set with this thing you can't always get a perfect hook set so I want to have that thing where it doesn't have to tear through a lot of plastic um, so that text pose is definitely way to go like always I'm gonna tie a Palomar knot People hate on a Palomar knot, but I don't break it. I'm, I don't break it. I live and die by it. I tie everything on a Palomar knot except for giant swim baits. Matter of fact, on any video I've ever shot that y'all have watched, all those football, I mean, all those big worm fish, all those cranking fish, I broke off. The only fish I've broke off this year was at Chickamauga on that when we caught a ton of them was the only time I've broke off on the hook set. But I, I know it was due to dragging that in those rocks because we were fishing like a bluff on had a ton of rocks down there out super deep. And I know my line got frayed and that's why I broke off. But literally I don't break off with a uh, with a pile or not. And as y'all could see from the uh, Chickamauga video, we were swinging pretty dang hard. Anyhow, I'm gonna get this drop shot tied on. I'm go I mean, not a drop shot, this Ned rig worm i'm gonna get that tied on i'm gonna go head over to the first spot see if there's a school there see you guys out on the chesty in just a second all right so i've got my chart color set on 15 to 17 feet 
to show this green. There's some fish on the side on side imaging right there. That's a uh, several fish. There's some fish right there on that stump. And then this stump is where that waypoint is. Still some fish down there. So I'm gonna remember that, but there's nobody. Well, now there is a boat up here, but I'm just gonna keep idling. Um, I know there's fish on that waypoint. I'm gonna fish it later. I'm just gonna keep going down the top of this ledge and I'm looking on both sides. I'm not just looking at down imaging. I'm, I'm mostly, honestly, I'm mostly looking at side imaging just to see you know, where I see them at. Keeping an eye on all three. Also keeping an eye on this chart, making sure that I'm lined up on the, you know, on the ledge correctly. I'm just gonna go down the top of it. These fish have been sitting up on top. Sometimes they'll get off on the side on the actual ledge part of it, but for the most part, they've been sitting up on the top of it. All right, now something to keep in mind, there's a guy out in front of me. You can see him out there in a triton. He just, he's graphing the same ledge as me and he just stopped and started casting. So I'm gonna shut it down right here, actually. Kind of a good spot because there's another gigantic school of fish that I just rode up on. So, good God, that's a huge, huge school. So I'm gonna stop mark there that's waypoint 2413 and I'm gonna stop right here giving that guy plenty of space not getting in on him and start fishing I pulled up my map and down imaging mostly just worried about the map and often just looking down at down imaging just to see if the fish move closer to the boat I don't like to make a ton of casts with the same thing if they're not biting, especially with a school that big. If they're not biting, I'm going to keep throwing something else in there at them because I feel like they should be biting. The school's way too big to not get bit. God, missed it. So I made two casts with the wobble head, three casts with the wobble head, made four casts with the knit head, and now I've picked up a jerky J. And I'm just gonna keep changing, keep changing, keep changing until you figure out exactly what they want. Hmm. Here's one. Big one. Cut, came off. I don't know how in the freak he came off. Oh, that's frustrating. Well, as much as I preached about that stupid head, I have missed several fish on it recently, and that ticks me off. I hate missing fish. I, I don't, I mean, I hate losing them, especially on a big head, a big, big shaky head. I don't feel like you should be losing fish. I'm gonna go back to this straight shank hook. Um, I want the red bug. I just feel like they should not come off of that big worm. I mean, you give them plenty of time to eat it. You set the hook really hard. You know that the fish has got it. I just don't feel like you should lose a fish on that, on a big worm. I, I just, I might be picky, but I hate losing them. So I'm gonna cut that EWG head off. I don't know if maybe they were just eating really good and that's why I was hooking so many of them. And maybe when it's tougher, hell, I don't know. I know one thing, um, that's the second one I've missed in a row on it. I mean, the second one I've lost in a row on it. So it's getting cut off. This is a half ounce head though. I like a three quarter ounce head a lot better, but 
I don't think I have any three quarters of this big head unless they're they're definitely somewhere in my boat but couldn't find them don't feel like looking all right back to the action Good one. Oh, Chunker. Finally got a bite. Oh, Chunky Chunk. That's a fat sucker, too. It ain't big. Like, it don't weigh a ton, but he got a freaking belly on him. Little old fat chunk. Turn him loose. Caught. This is a absolute freaking giant. Oh, it ain't either. Oh, man. He bit it as soon as it hit the bottom. Whew. This keeps my heart racing like crazy. It's a freaking fat chunk right there. That's a good one. That's like a, I don't know, maybe three and a half. Maybe three and a half. Oh, I thought that was old Clydezilla. I know y'all can hear me breathing hard because I, I am. This freaking crap gets me jacked up. Oh man, I thought that was a giant. I'm not gonna lie, I really thought that was a giant. My heart is beating out of control right now. I need to stop and get some freaking water or some Powerade. Stroked it though. God, there's a lot of fish below us. Fart, 6.95. That didn't take long. <laughs> Little one. <laughs> Look at that tiny freaking hook. Pegged. I mean, you can't even barely get that sucker out either. I mean, that sucker hit it the millisecond he hit the bottom. That tiny baby hook, and you can barely get them off.
god look at that one freaking big one oh i hope y'all just saw that i dropped i saw them when i got closer i dropped this thing straight down on them and literally instantly caught this fish that's like a freaking five pounder that might be a six pounder no it's not a six pounder good god check that freaking crap out i hope y'all saw that i just scanned over those fish saw them on my down imaging i hadn't been catching them throwing at them i've freaking catch that one if that's pre-spawn that's a that's over six i don't know how big that fish is but oh that is a freaking good one right there look how he's caught too right in the top of the head on that net head right in the face was not coming off Dang, that's awesome, dude. Oh, that was freaking sweet. Well, well, well. That was sick. I was not expecting that. Hope that GoPro is running. Oh, that was freaking awesome. I've been throwing at them. I knew there was a ton of fish down there. And as soon as I got up to my waypoint, freaking soon as I dropped down, catch one. When you're ledge fishing, always have your top water ready. I wasn't even ready enough. This is a vixen. And I can't tell you how many times the bass chase a bait up to the top and you catch them schooling on a ledge and that was out in probably 30 foot of water. On top water, ledge fishing. On the vixen. And you see that sucker right there has been chewed up. So yeah, I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that top water hanging off the side, ready to go. Like always, thank you guys for supporting my channel. Please go subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I've been cranking out a ton of videos recently. I would love your help and love your support by simply clicking the subscribe button down below.